This is Jacob with HVACB. Today we're gonna to be looking at what it takes for us to do a full indoor and outdoor unit maintenance agreement, maintenance package, preventative maintenance. First place we'd like to start on any kind of maintenance agreements is inside in the attic, basement, or crawl space. We're working on a heat pump on this system, but heat pump or furnace, there are little differences and I can explain those later. After you've given everything your first and foremost visual inspection, the next visual and more than likely something that will be changed, air filter. This here is a 1625 by one air filter. Airflow always wants to point towards the furnace. Go ahead and again, arrow pointing towards the air handler and the blower. Out in an air handler, it'll be the coil on bottom, but in a furnace section, it'll be a blower motor on the bottom. What you would like to do while you're there is you take your flashlight, a scope cam, whatever you have available, cell phone if you need, put it inside. You will look for any kind of buildup, any kind of debris, dander. If you're looking on an air handler coil, you want to look on the bottom of the coil to make sure the breathable side that goes through the system isn't covered with a bunch of debris, dander, any kind of filth that's gotten through the system over the years, clogged the coiling and cause you any kind of airflow restrictions. Improper cooling, one of the main things that it can lead to is high head pressure on the outdoor unit, but it can also cause a low suction pressure, which will give you freeze up on your coil. After you've done an inspection and a change out of the filter in the system and you've given everything a look on the drain line, any kind of visual inspections are over. Next, I like to get into this blower compartment here. You pull this door, affect the blower motor. You look at the fans to make sure that the fins on the fan motor and squirrel cage assembly is not covered and coated. You'll also want to check all your wire nut connections for your thermostat wires, any float safeties. Down here, we have one in this pan in case the system ever overflows the pan. There's also some units and some companies like to put in line here. You put a float switch somewhere in this direction or over there. You can put it wherever is the easiest access. You can wire it in and you can also cut communications if there's ever an issue with this actual PVC gravity drain filling and backing up to the system to cause a, another line of defense for the water issues. The other thing with air handlers and anything horizontally in an attic like this, over time, these uh, foam blocks aren't really gonna do it that often, but sometimes over time, systems can settle a little bit. You just wanna make sure that during the install process and anything over time, this system here, you put a level on there and you wanna make sure that your system is bubble leveled nice and evenly, and it has left and right is good to go, front and back is good to go, right there in the nice, in, the, in between the two lines on the middle. The only thing that is acceptable is if you want to point it a little bit towards you so that down towards this drain exit, you have flow towards that. But other than that, the next thing when you, while you're in here, you look over all your wire nut connections, make sure they're nice and tight. You wanna check out your high voltage whip and make sure that everything inside the air handler is nice and tight. Check all your wire nut connections. If it has a heat strip kit, you wanna make sure that those terminals are looking good. You look for any charred sections. During the heat season, you, will, you would check the operation of all your heat strips. You check for amp draw, you check for correct, proper voltages and ensure that everything is running the way that it needs to. After everything in the attic on this side has been a good once over, you've checked all your electrical connections and components. You've checked your filter and more than likely changed it because it has been time. You check your drain to make sure that there's no signs of clogging, that there's no active issues with the drain. You go ahead and check all your wiring connections, your blower motor, your blower wheel, and your squirrel cage. And you make sure that all your safeties are wired in correctly. You make sure that your thermostat wire is all nice and tight. If it is a furnace, it will have a control board with terminals. You wanna make sure that those are all nice and tight and that the sections of wire are not stripped and nicked past where they need to be. You will also on a hit air handler will have wire nuts. You wanna check and make sure that all of those are nice and tight. You wanna make sure that none of those have bounced off over time. And the other section of heat pump during the heating season, you'll want to also turn on emergency heat and auxiliary heat to make sure that both, both sections of the system are running and operating correctly. You wanna make sure that your heat strips, you wanna run an amp draw on those, make sure that they're well within the range and there will be a data plate on these or a booklet so that you can see what each individual section of this system would run like. Most of the time they will have kind of a, a list of amp draw readings, voltage outputs and everything that you would know if it's running correctly and properly. The last thing you want to check before you leave is make sure that all the terminals, anything that has a screw terminal is nice and tight because loose connections can cause amp spikes, it can cause arcing, it can cause melting of the wires, anything like that in the future. So if you start to see signs of that, check your connections, pull your disconnect, tighten everything down if you need to. When walking up to the outdoor unit to start the outdoor section of the maintenance, the first thing to do so you can check everything with no voltage is to walk up and disconnect the outdoor power disconnect. Open 
out the electrical compartment and start the main section of electrical connections, run capacitor, check, cleanliness, getting cobwebs, everything on that end. So to start, clean some cobwebs so you don't get all of them all over you and your tools. I'll also always check for spiders and any other little hidden creatures and critters. And from there, you pull all your screws off. Any build up ants. While you're doing it, you can always look at all your connections. Everything's nice and tight while you're cleaning it. Make sure you don't disconnect anything. Test all your wire nut leads. Make sure everything's nice on the low voltage side. With the disconnect off, they're nice and tight, nice and clean, no nicks, no sections touching on bare metal. You also want to make sure that these have a good clean stripping. Make sure that they're nice and tight with those female fittings for your low voltage. Now this is a heat pump, so there's a lot more wires and safeties, low pressure cutouts, high pressure cutouts, and goes through this disc, uh, the defrost board. For power for the air conditioning and for the heat pump mode, which is what activates everything for the reversing valve and all the other stuff that gives you heat and cool on this. But for today, we're gonna be looking over the air conditioning side. But now that you've kind of gone in here and looked through everything, next best thing to do is a decharge, pull the run capacitor of leads off, and then you check with your multimeter on microfarads. Make sure that this is well within that plus or minus 6% range for the compressor and the fan motor. Once you've done all that, you've kind of given it a look, you've tested everything, you make sure that in here is looking good on the electrical component side. Next thing we do, we'll connect up down here, we'll connect our leads. Once you've gone down here, removed your cap covers for the Schraders, you'll want to listen for any leakage at these points here for that Schrader core can start a leak and you'll hear it hissing or you'll see it bubbling. You also, while you're removing your metal caps or plastic caps here, check your joints for any visible signs of oil and leakage. You can always kind of tell it. Also gives it a little bit of a smell if you know what it smells like. Same over there, just like with upstairs, you want to do a visual inspection while you're down here. And once you have your probes connected to the suction in the liquid line, and then you have your temperature clamp right there, you'll be able to, depending on what style of app or if you have gauges it'll show you but putting it on that side right there will give you sub cool and that will show you roughly if you have a good good enough with ambient temperatures and indoor temperature if you have a good enough amount of pressures and refrigerant in the system plus it'll also tell you to make sure that the TXV is regulating correctly and the metering device is working the way that it should so with my probes since they are field piece I have the job link app go off you will see that these pressures are not perfectly equalized they are showing that there is pressure in the system. I have it set for R410A. And from here, you go back here, put it back on, and you can watch your pressures and everything if it needs it. Before you do that, and this one could use a little bit of a spray down, what you do is get your hose, go through these veins. If it's really dirty, there's some screws here. You can tear it apart and open up the coil and give this whole thing a real good bath, give it a nice rinse down. And then you can also, you can make sure that after it dries for a little bit, you'll want to watch your pressures because sometimes an outdoor dirty condensing coil can also give you a high head pressure, can give you a little bad readings on your sub cooling. So it is always best to make sure and ensure that you have a nice clean coil and the system is operating correctly because that can also, depending on how bad or clogged or how dirty it is outside, can also falsify bad readings or good readings to show you that it looks like it's okay on the refrigerant side, but once you've cleaned it and the pressures have come back down, these systems can be low, a little bit or a lot. Usually if it's a lot and it has a dirty coil, you'll still be able to tell. But if it's just a little off on the charge, a couple ounces for 410, 22, usually is a little bit more bulletproof for a cup or a pound or so. But once you start running and after it's cleaned off and cooled off, sometimes it can show you a hidden issue with pressure. So that's why we, during a maintenance, do kind of everything to make sure outdoors are cleaned, everything is good. You always want to make sure also while you're here visually that your drain line, this one is buried, but if your drain line is rolling and you can see water coming out or if you have a sludge sucker or some form of 
CO2 device, you can always clear out drain lines and make sure that everything is clear and clean after that. So let me go ahead, since this one does look like it needs it, I'm going to go ahead and grab the hose, turn everything on, and give this outdoor coil a quick rinse. After everything has been rinsed down, you'll be able to kind of look inside of there a lot better. This one's been maintained fairly well. This was just kind of a quick rinse. There are multiple other ways of doing it. You can also pull the fan motor. As a technician, I wouldn't suggest too many homeowners 100% unless you know kind of your ways around it, but you can pull this fan motor top out and you can spray it from the inside out. Or if it is filthy enough, if it's been a handful of years of neglect, a lot of different yard work and everything else, another way around it, good way around it would also be getting the system completely opened up of all these exterior metal sheets here. And then you can spray it down with a chemical. It'll really get in, eat everything off, and you can spray that down and give it a thorough, thorough rinse if it really needs a good, good chemical bath. After letting the system sit and dry off for a little bit, just so that we're not having to watch the system rise in pressure since the cold water can kind of give issues to the outdoor unit pressure-wise, since it is kind of breathing in a little bit colder ambient temperatures. Go back to your disconnect, put it back in. As previously stated, having to wait for this system because it is a little bit cooler outside today. Inside of this home is already down to 68 degrees and we just rinsed it off with some pretty cool water. So letting that whole system dry off and it's still in the shade. If this was in full sun and it had been dried off for a good amount of time, the pressures would probably be pretty wonderful. I've already seen these running pressures earlier this afternoon, so I already know this system is good to go and everything is running the way that it needs. But Letting that monitor and watch these pressures and as they get back to where you want, let it run for about that 15 minutes or so. Everything will kind of get a little bit closer to that range. We'd love to see anywhere between about a 8 to 10 degree. 10 degree is kind of the standard between most. Some units, some brands do post it on their data plate about what they would like subcool wise with factory charge or with just regular standard charge. but. You always kind of want to keep a lot of things in consideration. The ambient temperature, the indoor temperature of the home already, those will always fluctuate the subcools and the pressures and everything. And again, if it just had a recent bath, nice cold water outside, you know, you'll have to give it give it that little bit of run time. But after you let it run and monitor for a little while, everything will be good to go. And if it needs to be any adjustments and you need to talk to the homeowner about some possibilities of refrigerant slapped in there if you need to check when you're checking amp draws on running pressures and see if you have anything that's spiking amp draw anything this is this is what a maintenance is for this is letting somebody know anything that could be done pre preemptively and preventatively is coming around the bin just kind of able to let them know and then if you need to do you know, leak search or replace a run capacitor look at doing possibly a motor replacement compressor dependently on how bad the system off is you'll know from there and you'll be able to keep them informed